Hi, I'm Johnny Jenkins and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's great to have you. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you could subscribe. And today we're doing a Q&A all about my work in radio and the media, how I got into it, maybe some tips I would give you. I asked for questions over on my Instagram page at Johnny Jenkins DJ and I've got plenty to keep us busy. We're gonna start with this one from Harriet, which says, what advice would you give to someone uh, who wanted to enter the radio industry? I mean, I would say, Harriet, that first of all, right now it's quite easy to be making content, be that for a YouTube channel like this, or uh, recording your own podcast and putting it out online. Um, it's all more accessible now than it's ever been before. So my first thing I'd say to anyone wanting to get involved is always make your own content and make it regularly. Um, also, Harry, it's always a good opportunity to, to ask your local radio station or local newspaper maybe for a bit of work experience or for some tips or if you could come in for the day often they're more welcoming than you would expect. And that's how I got into radio. I did work experience uh, at my local radio station. So Harry, I, I hope you have got on well. And if you've got any other questions, do get in touch with me. Um, and that links in, by the way, to, to Elliot, who says, do you need prior experience to starting on the radio? You're not gonna be, you're not gonna have your own show and get on air straight away. It takes time, make your own content, feel comfortable in front of the camera uh, or the microphone. And then the more you do, um, the more likelihood you'll, you'll be able to get on the radio. That links in as well to something which, which Noah has asked me, how did you develop your confidence on the airwaves? Well, Noah, I think I had been involved in radio for about a year before I, I was actually, the microphone went up and I did my very own show. It was an afternoon show. So um, I would say the more practice you do, you do in radio a lot of time, dummy shows, like little practice shows where you're in a different studio, you pretend you're live and you do the whole show. Um, and you'll make mistakes, but the more and more you do, the more confidence, the more experience, um, and, and then the better presented that you'll be for that as well. We're gonna go to um, a question that I've got from Katie, but also Olivia has asked a, a similar question. What do you enjoy most about your job? So um, uh, I, I present shows, I manage content for other people, I do political updates every day as well. I think what I enjoy most is when you're like in a really good mood and you're in the studio and maybe there's a news story breaking and you're, you're just covering that as it goes along. All journalists would say that live breaking news is the best thing to do. It gives you a real adrenaline rush and before you know it, those three, four hours are up. So definitely live breaking news. Um, and also a lot of it is just how you feel, you know, how comfortable you feel, what mindset you're in, do you feel prepared enough? And uh, when it comes along and you're in the right frame of mind, you can really produce um, some fantastic radio. Um, good, good question from Chloe, which made me laugh a little bit. Is your radio voice different to your normal speaking voice? So I would say that this now is my normal speaking voice. Um, maybe it's a bit more sort of casual, a bit more informal if I'm, if I'm chatting around my friends. Uh, your, your radio voice, it it's not too different it's just your radio personality is often described as yourself plus 10 percent so maybe just that little bit more um maybe you just exaggerate things you say a little bit more or, or you just switch it a little bit it takes you a little while to find your radio voice and sometimes it's better to not have one at all and just to be yourself but um in the same way that when you pick up the phone you have a bit of a telephone voice um radio voices do exist and some of them um are really fantastic. We've got a question um, from James and James is asking me, here it is, uh, how are you able to maintain an interesting discussion when it's just you on the microphone? Um, it's difficult. So if it's just you talking to a microphone or a camera, then sometimes um, you will need to, to do quite a lot of preparation um, so that you know what you're gonna say and how you're gonna fill that time without sort of playing a song. Um, if, if um, you, you're, you're reacting to news or breaking news, then actually sometimes that would just carry you. Um, I, would, I would say to radio presenters, if you're, if you're struggling or you're sort of, your mind goes blank and you don't know what to say, just take a moment, tell the listener what time it is, tell them your name, tell them the station name and the slogan, and you've just bought yourself five or 10 seconds um, to sort of get back into, into the zone, and, and that often does help. In terms of just maintaining an interesting discussion, well, James, I've got quite a short attention span. If I'm interested in the discussion, I know my listeners will be. If I'm bored, and sometimes you are a little bit bored when you're talking to someone, um, I hate to say it, but sometimes it's not always the most interesting topic, or, or perhaps your mind is somewhere else, then if you're bored, they're probably bored as well. So it's important to keep it lively, keep it fun. And if you feel like there's nothing else to say, 
then there isn't. Move on, talk about something else, play a song, whatever um, your options may be. I've had a lot of questions in, I think this was the most common one, about how I manage my time, because I'm doing a university degree, um, I'm doing my radio stuff, I, have, I do a lot of filming and things, there's quite a lot of stuff going on, and sometimes it can be hard to keep a track of it all. Um, so here we are, here's one from Chef, how do you time manage everything? And uh, Law's also saying, how do you balance uni and personal life um, with your radio work? I've had a lot of questions on that. I would say that it takes time. I've always, always, always been a busy person. Um, even when I was back at school, I was editing the school newspaper, being busy with things. Um, it's just how I am. And, and some people are just like that. Um, but if you like it and you know what you're doing and you're good at time management, you get up on the same time every day, you go to bed at the same time, you've got structure in your day, you plan things out, you think things through um, and you've got a good calendar that's always sort of looked at and everything is logged in there, then it usually is okay. But it's taken me a lot of time and quite a few years to develop this, this ability to be able to do a job, to do uni, to do other things um, all at the same time. I think in Corona times where we were working from home a lot of the time and I'm studying from home sometimes, I find it a lot easier because I don't have to travel very much. Uh, but in normal times I travel all over the place and, and that can get a bit much. Um, I would say that the time management is the key thing. And once you've got that and you've got good sleep, then it does sort of come to you, but it can be hard. And sometimes I do wonder how I do it. Um, but generally, if you know what you're gonna do at the start of the day, um, and you work your way through that, you do sort of tick things off. If, if you are a bit more interested in that, um, chef or law, then I have got vlogs on my channel of sort of day in the life that, that might be able to help you. Most of them uh, film sort of pre-corona, so you can see like what normal day, um, you know, is, is like for me. Uh, we've got a question from Alicia, who is asking me, uh, how do you deal with interviewing people? I do a lot of interviews, um, politicians, celebrities, whoever, who you don't really get on with that well. Um, that's so funny. And another one um, here that sort of links into that. Um, how do you tackle covering stories and topics and interviews you're not familiar with? So I would say that every person I interview, I always, if I can, if we've got the time, take the opportunity to have a bit of a conversation with them, to spend 15 minutes having a cup of coffee with them um, before we go into the studio. If you have the ability to do that, you will find a personal rapport with this person and, and you'll be able to, to conduct a much better interview. Um, Ali, you mentioned celebrities and often when you do those, you get like 15 minutes with them and you just don't have time sometimes um, to, to sort of get to know them or talk to them. That does happen sometimes, but I would say that if you know the topic and, and you're well across, you can normally do um, a good interview. And the other question about how do you tackle stories and topics you're not comfortable with? Well, I would say that it's your job to be, to, to know what's going on. And if you're about to open up a microphone and you're about to talk about something you have no idea about, ask yourself, why are you talking about that? Now, if it's something live and breaking news, and I've had this a lot with Corona where I haven't always understood something, you do have to take a bit of time where you can find it to learn a little bit because there's nothing worse than you as a presenter learning at the same time as a listener because you're not gonna be able to communicate that message well. Um, so you should uh, be familiar with those topics you're covering. And if you're not, um, ask yourself why and ask yourself then why you're covering it. I think that's really important. Um, it, I, I don't talk about sport on the radio because I know nothing about sport. I've got nothing to add, I've got nothing to give people and, and so I, I choose not to talk about that. So I, I would say, um, yeah, just make sure if, if you're doing any radio or any content, make sure you're comfortable with, with those topics. Um, Jack asks, do you prefer working from home or working in the studio? Um, it's different at the moment uh, in Corona times, I'm only going to the studio once or twice a week and nothing beats it. You know, it, it, having all the faders in front of you and doing everything, it's amazing and I love it. Working from home though, when I'm not sort of like doing a live show, maybe I'm just sort of popping up as political correspondent or whatever, it is nice. It's nice being able to manage things. Um, so it depends, but I, I like a sort of balance, I think. But being in the studio is so fun. There really is, um, there's nothing better th than presenting a show live in the studio. And a, a question from Anna that, that asks um, about news, because of, of course I cover a lot of news. Uh, Anna is asking, do you ever feel that being immersed in the news 24 seven takes a toll on you personally? Um, do you know what Anna, I'd never felt this. I'd never, ever, ever, ever felt this until coronavirus came along. And I was covering this story um, at work in the day um, and in a live spot every evening, talking about people dying, talking about health. 
and then going home and having to talk about that and seeing friends or meeting friends online and that would be the only thing and sometimes I just found it a little bit overwhelming and I decided to delete social media where I can on the weekends and take a little step back um, I think it's important working in news that sometimes you do just treat things as a story you don't always see them as as part of your life you're, you're sort of separate from the story um, and it can be a bit difficult but I would say that if you're resting and you're giving yourself a break and I'd for, for example on Saturdays I'd hardly do anything it, it gives me a time to rest and recharge then you will be able to cover that story better and if you're struggling being immersed in the news so much um, but you know you love news and you know you want to cover that you probably need a break you probably need a rest um, and, so, and so that that's what I would say and, and Jack has asked a very very similar question about coronavirus and um has it been hard to keep up with coverage because of course news news changes every hour with corona and um, it's my job to know that news when I go on the radio that night. Um, in some ways, it, it, it hasn't been too difficult because I've been at home, I've had time on my hands. Uh, it's sort of the only story in town at the moment. But sometimes you want a bit of a rest or uh, there's something going on. It, I do find myself sometimes watching press conferences like on days off, you know, if something's going on. But that's a lot of the time, Jack, because I'm so interested in politics and, and news and everything outside of work that, that I want to, um, you know, see that. A great one uh, from Bryony, who asks really about um, the future of radio and the role of radio. She says, uh, do you think radio is dying out and how can we keep young people engaged? So, of course, I wouldn't say radio is dying. For, for so many years, there's been this myth, and it is a myth, that radio is dying, radio is ending. It's not. People do listen to the radio. It's still the most uh, popular method of, of communication um, every week in the UK. I'd say young people don't listen to radio very much. But they do consume audio, be that listening to music or podcasts or whatever, and they do listen to radio sometimes. So I don't think radio's um, dying, but I do think that actually it does need to adapt and hit young people better sometimes. And a lot of the time you can do that through social media. If you've got a good social media presence, you can engage more younger people. And, and that's that's what I try and do. And um, and hopefully it makes it a little bit more accessible to you. And I think actually every radio presenter and every radio station has, has their own responsibility um, to be doing that. And, and just a final question, two of these um, that are about the equipment I use and how I record from home. Jess says, uh, what programs you use to record and edit? So with Radio Jess, um, I use Audacity, it's free, anyone can do it. I've tried other softwares, I've paid for softwares, nothing is as simple and as good, and that, that's what I prefer, um, using Audacity. So I'd recommend checking um, that out. And Lizzie's saying, what equipment do you use to record shows from home? Any other tips uh, for radio from home? Particularly Lizzie asks about um, student radio, and I do uh, the Johnny Jenkins show on there. Um, so the equipment I use, uh, if I'm recording like just a radio show and it's not, there's no video, it's not going anywhere other than the radio, um, I have a microphone which I think is called a Blue Snowball, I think I'm right in saying that, um, and then I use these headphones behind me which are called DT770 Pro, they're really good, you don't need uh, amazing headphones if you're recording from home, um, I'd say if, if you, if you want to sort of spend a little bit of money on headphones and microphone, spend the money on the microphone because that's what people are going to hear, um, but I'd say that's quite an affordable um, approach. If, if it's video and I'm presenting radio as video, which happens quite a lot nowadays, um, I use a, a clip-on microphone, which uh, you can get online fairly cheap. Just don't get a really, really cheap one because um, it sort of reflects in the audio quality and you don't want it to sound too rubbish. And uh, I haven't got it in at the moment, but I use an earpiece so that I can hear people uh, without there being feedback. Um, and I also use some filming lights, which I'm using today. Uh, but if I'm just recording radio, it's literally just a microphone and headphones and then um, Audacity, which is um, the software I use. So thank you all for submitting questions, and I've had so many, we weren't able to get through them all. And if you'd like to see more of, of this, please do comment below and let me know. And follow me on Instagram, at Johnny Jenkins DJ, so that next time we do one of these, you have the chance to ask a question. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like what you saw, remember to like and subscribe.